What is up you guys? Welcome to another day with Spencer here on my personal channel and this week we are talking about all the questions I'm going to be asking my surgeons when it comes to phalloplasty. Now if you don't know, my name is Spence. I'm a non-binary transmasculine individual currently pursuing phalloplasty and you are more than welcome to come along for the ride. So what I've done is um, organized six questions that I'll be asking all of my surgeons uh, when it comes to my surgery and what I'm looking for and things like that. And of course, other questions will arise after we have a conversation, and this is by no means an exhaustive list. These are just some questions that come to mind when it comes to phalloplasty. The first question is, do you use Integra? Now, if you don't know what Integra is, neither do I. But from my understanding, it has something to do with helping the nerves grow back in your arm and also decreasing the amount of indention that is done after um, radial forearm flap is removed. So I really don't want to have a huge indent in my arm, so I would like to use Integra if possible. Um, also, if I have any way of benefiting or encouraging nerve growth back in my arm, then I'm going to take it. So um, I do want to see if my surgeons use Integra. The other thing is Integra is quite expensive. It's about $6,000 a sheet, and it's not usually covered by insurance. They usually hold out for it for burn victims and things like that. So I would need a, um, a surgeon that is willing to fight for Integra um, because I have had people say they got it covered by insurance with the insurgents coding it differently and things like that. So not only do they use Integra, but also will they fight insurance for it. The second question is, how long will I have to stay in the vicinity? So as you know, all of my surgeries are going to be out of state. Um, the closest will be in Chicago. The furthest away will either be San Francisco or Miami. Um, but since I will not be in Michigan for surgery, I need to know how long I'll be in the vicinity um, in case complications arise for checkups, for things like that. So it's important for me to know how long I'll be having to stay wherever I decide to go and um, plan accordingly. The third question is, when will I be able to uh, transition from one stage to the next? So um, some of my surgeons, some surgeries are two stages, others are three, depending on what surgeon I go to. And I need to know how long I'll have to wait in between each stage to progress. Um, this is just so I can plan um, you know, a year out of how my surgeries are going to align and how it's going to affect work and things like that. So I need to know how long um, in between each surgery I would have to wait and uh, plan accordingly for that. The fourth question is, how many stages of phalloplasty do you provide? Now, this question is important just so I know how many stages of surgery I will actually have to get to be completed. Um, now, Dr. Crane and Dr. Santucci at the Crane Center in Austin does one stage phalloplasty where creation of phallus and everything else is done stage one and then stage two is erectile device and uh, testicular implants. And then Dr. Salgado in Miami does three stages where stage one is the pre-lamination of the urethra, stage two is the actual phalloplasty, and then stage three is erectile implants. So I just need to know how many stages it is. I personally want the least stages possible. However, two versus three is not that big of a difference to me. So um, either way would be fine, but it's important to know how many stages your surgeon has for phalloplasty. The fifth question is, do you work with a skilled nursing facility? The reason why this question is so important to me is because I need to know if I'm going to have to pay out of pocket for lodging or if I can use my insurance at a skilled nursing facility in order to pay for phalloplasty um, stays. This will be a huge way to lift off my shoulders if they do work with a skilled nursing facility, just because I'll be able to save money by not having to pay for room and lodging. My fiance will be able to fly down for the first couple of days, fly back home, and then fly back to pick me up. So uh, how much or how they work with the skilled nursing facility is crucial. Uh, when it comes to budgeting for phalloplasty, um, just because even though the insurance typically covers phalloplasty, it doesn't cover lodging and staying. So that's where the bulk of the money, at least for me, comes from when it comes to phalloplasty. And then the final question is about complications. What are the rates of complication in your practice that you know of? 
Um, I know anyone who gets urinary length, uh, urethra lengthening, um, there is a higher risk of complications such as fistulas and strictures um, versus someone who doesn't get UL. And that's fine. I just want to know what they have seen in the past, however many years they've been doing this, uh, what their percentage of risk is. I also want to know what percentage of people do not get um, feeling back in their phallus versus people who do get feeling back in their phallus. Uh, just so I have an understanding and know, and I'm aware of all the complications that could arise from my surgery. So those are the six questions that I'll be asking all of my surgeons when it comes to phalloplasty. Again, this is by no means an exhaustive list. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, issues, problems, concerns, please feel free to leave them in the comment box below. Let me know what other questions I should ask my surgeon, what you feel is important, or what questions you've asked your surgeons. As always, you can reach out to me on social media or in the comment box. I'll be sure to check in and uh, reply to all comments that I get. And that's all I got. So I hope you have a great week and are gearing up for an even better weekend. It is Sunday. It is Spencer. Until next time.